it's hard to watch yourself do anything, I feel like. It's cringy. I've known me for 33 years, so I'm like, I don't want to listen to this bitch talk. <laughs> I just have nothing to say. You look like a million bucks. Oh, thanks. I took a shower. Put on perfume for you. Please give it up for Mary Santora. What's going on, Philly? How we doing? Oh, so excited to be here. Yes, I uh, got in from Cleveland, Ohio today, so I'm excited about it. Hell yeah. Oh my God, there's like six of us. That's amazing. What'd you say? You were here Friday. I was here Friday, yes, you're right. So thank you for calling me on my bullshit. <laughs> 19 seconds into my set. <laughs> Who the fuck put Snopes.com in the front row? Like, what is this? I know, I'm just sitting here and I'm like, I'm like, oh no, I'm just gonna, you know, greet him. Like I've never been here before and this guy's like fucking bullshit. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Were you at the show on Friday? No. No. <laughs> this dude's just stalking my Instagram. Watching every single geotag. tag. Like, I know where she's been. I know where she's going. God damn. I didn't think I'd go out that way, you know? I always thought I'd have a cool death, but I didn't think it would be in Philadelphia from that fucking guy. You know? You said he's from Pittsburgh? Oh, is that a... Is that like a slight here? Where you're like, oh, people from Pittsburgh. Oh. Oh, you're the same fucking city. Uh... I see it, I see it. Hell yeah, dude. You know what's really funny is that they tell you not to like divide the audience as soon as you come on stage. And I was like, oh, what city do you hate? You're fucking twins. Uh... <laughs> we don't like Pittsburgh. It's okay, Clevelanders don't like Pittsburgh either. That's like one of our main personality traits. <laughs> you know, pretty cool. No, I am excited to be here. I got in Thursday. Um... <laughs> I like to do sightseeing, uh, sightseeing things no matter what city I'm in. So one thing I do love to do when I come to uh, Philadelphia is I play a game called Asleep or Overdose. And... <laughs> no one wins. Uh, you can't win that game. <laughs> No, but I do like doing sightseeing stuff. And I was out in D.C. not too long ago. Uh, do you know the date? <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. I was out in D.C. and I was, um, I was doing the sightseeing shit. And, you know, I got to, you know, the Washington Monument. And I got to the White House. And it was a crazy sight at the White House, man. There was, like, this dude standing outside the White House. And he's wearing a fuck Joe Biden t-shirt. And then there's another guy who's just yelling in the general direction. He's just like, bring back Trump! <laughs> he's like, like he's a scorned lover in an 80s movie, you know? And then there was a third dude who went as far as to make a sign and he was walking around chanting, okay? And he's like, not my president! And listen, that's fine. I do not give a shit where you lie politically. That's your right as an American to protest. No problem, right? But can we all agree that that's gotta be annoying for Joe Biden? <laughs> like, <laughs> that dude lives there. <laughs> Do you have any idea how aggravated I get when I just get the mail of the person who used to live in my house? <laughs> yeah. I could not imagine if her friends were just hanging out on my lawn every day. <laughs> like, I'm just trying to have my coffee in the morning and I just look out the window, there's some chick on my lawn like... There's a guy with a sign, not my resident. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> it's crazy, man. Flying's wild, dude. I'm looking at flying recently like I've looked at every hockey game I've ever been to. I'm just like, mm, tickets are cheap, maybe I'll see a fight. <laughs> you know? If you're not seeing a fight on a flight, you need to downgrade, okay? Your standards are too high. You need to hit up Spirit, Frontier. Those are the ones. That's prime fist fighting location right there, you know? You can't put that many poor people into such a confined space. There's, there's, wow, that was big laugh. That was, she said, bah! <laughs> are you a poor person who flies Spirit? <laughs> You do? Oh, just, you're just poor in general. Hell yeah. She's like, I'm so poor, we drive. That's... <laughs> she just say, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. What don't you give a fuck about? Huh? What? Is that not what you said? No, he put his fingers in my ranch. He put his fingers in your ranch? <laughs> Does that mean something here? <laughs> or is he literally just that white trash that he's eating ranch? <laughs> like a like a fucking raccoon. <laughs> Why are your fingers in dipping sauce, sir? Did you run out of french fries? Just do it like a shot at that point. Fuck it. It's a metaphor. It's a metaphor. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> it always comes down to that, you know, at some point. You know what? Fuck it. Just cheers. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. Did you just say I'm good? <laughs> she went, do you know what's so funny is that there's like nine cameras in here. They're like, we're taping a special, we're taping a special. And then when I talk about Rand, she's like, she's pretty good. <laughs> I like what she did with that ranch bit. I enjoyed that a lot, actually. <laughs> Actually, I'm coming up on four years of sobriety. I'm very excited about that. Thank you. I never thought I had a drinking problem. And then I crashed my sixth car and I was like, maybe it's me. Okay, you're right. This could be a me thing, you know. I actually tried to quit drinking three times before that and it never stuck. Uh, I never made it an impressive amount of time. So I would like post this big thing on Facebook about how I was going sober and people would check in and be like, Mirror, how's it going? I'm like, it's been nine days, you know? And like, bitch, that's not even a pay period. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Everyone in my family knew I was an alcoholic though. Like so much so that they told me about it at a surprise party. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever shown up day drunk to what you thought was a barbecue <laughs> just to have everyone you've ever loved in the same room like, we need to talk <laughs> about your drinking. It's very hard not to get indignant when you're half a bottle of Tito's in, you know? And you're like, oh, I'm sorry, I had a problem with the way that I do live my life because I, I didn't tell you to get pregnant, okay? Do you know what? You said get out of my house, so what did I do? I moved out of your house, and now you're like, oh, you don't even have anybody for, Lord, for the quarters for the laundry. What are you, my dad? <laughs> and my dad's like, yeah. <laughs> I'm not pregnant because I'm not a seahorse. Um. <laughs> that one was for the marine biologist in the last time. <laughs> it's like, it's funny because it's true. The men get pregnant. Oh, it was pretty good. <laughs> no, it's, it's been a weird couple years to be sober. I'll tell you that, man. Like, prime lockdown, March, April 2020. Like, I did not even know what to do with my time. Like, I had to Google sober activities. <laughs> yeah, and the internet had nothing for me. <laughs> you guys, one of the things that popped up on Google was paddle boarding, which means that even Google was like, you don't drink. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, go stand on the river alone. I don't... 
Like, bitch, the only thing open is liquor stores. Like, it's liquor stores and Lowe's. If you're not getting drunk and building a deck, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I think that was my favorite part of the pandemic, though, was when everyone thought they were going to do home renovations, you know? They did. Like, oh, we're going to put a deck on the back. We're going to add an addition. And then lumber hit $200 a pound. <laughs> Just a bunch of dads standing in their backyard like, no, we just needed stairs. Uh, we just actually, we didn't need a whole deck, just stairs that went to nowhere. Uh. <laughs> did anybody do any COVID home renovations? Did anybody update or do anything fun during the pandemic? You did? Yeah. What did you do? New roof, new sidewalk, uh, foundation on our basement. New roof, sidewalk, and foundation on your basement. And HVAC. And HVAC. Holy shit, you guys got a whole new house. Did you do, did you do any of it yourself? No. no, good. You were too busy following me around. Right. Do you think I, think I had time for that? <laughs> like, I got here. <laughs> That's cool, man. Whole new place. <sighs> I don't know. It's been, uh, I don't know. Sobriety's cool. It's, it, COVID has definitely confirmed my alcoholism. I can tell you that 100%. Because like now, every time I use hand sanitizer, my mouth waters. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I never used hand sanitizer before this. Like, I'm not that guy. I'd be at the airport in 2018 and I'd see someone using hand sanitizer and I'd be like, dude, dude, <laughs> check out this fucking pussy. You see this guy? <laughs> oh, are you afraid of germs? Fuck you, dude. Grow up. <laughs> you kidding me? Look at me. I sit down on the porta potty at the county fair. You think I'm using hand sanitizer? No oh, shot. Some of you groaned. Fuck you. I know every bitch in here has been two tall boys and an elephant ear in. You're trying to do, you're lying to yourself. You're trying to do that porta potty squat. Your legs start shaking because you're not getting back into yoga. You haven't gone in two years. The fuck are you lying to, right? But you're just drunk enough that halfway through you accept your fate and you say, fuck it, I have hep C. I don't even care. I don't even care anymore. I don't care. They make a cream. I'll be fine. I am learning a lot in my sobriety, I am. Like, uh, I heard about mornings. Have you guys heard of mornings? <laughs> it's wild, dude. I woke up three weeks sober and I was like, hold on a minute, you mean I have time to get McDonald's breakfast and go to the bank? Get the fuck out of here. Is this how the 1% lives? Okay, all right, I see you. It is crazy. Uh, the, one of the hardest things about sobriety is uh, just raw dog in your emotions. That's almost impossible. Because like you don't realize how much you use alcohol as a crutch to not feel until that alcohol is taken away. And then all those emotions that you've been drowning for years creep back up at very inopportune times. <laughs> Like, I would just be running errands early in my sobriety, and then all of a sudden my brain would be like, hey, psst, hey, hey, you, you remember when your cousin hit on you when you were 13? <laughs> I was like, no, actually, I left that one to Jack Daniels, but you want to deal with that right now in a PetSmart? That's what you want to do? Okay. <laughs> now I'm crying with a 16-pound bag of cat food over my shoulder. Everyone's like, oh, see, women with cats are sad, you know? <laughs> There's another one. It's like, listen, I am sad, and it is about pussy, but not what you think. I don't want you guys to get the wrong idea, though. Like, I am very happy that I'm sober, okay? But, like, I look at my sobriety the same way I'm sure most of you look at your children. Where it's like, just because it is the best thing that has ever happened to me doesn't mean that every day isn't a fucking nightmare. <laughs> The drunk parents usually feel that one the most, you know? Yeah. It's hard. You got kids? Yeah. Too many? <laughs> How many kids do you have? You have three, and three is too many? 
You're just sitting there quiet. Do you hate them too? <laughs> He's just not going to answer. <laughs> What'd you say? You're going to leave that one alone? That's okay. That's fine. That's crazy that you think three kids is too many, though. That's wild. I'm one of five, so I can't even imagine it. I have like three seems easy. That seems like pff, not gonna no problem, you know? Does anybody have a bunch of kids? No, you're not gonna say anything, are you? No, I don't have any kids of my own. I don't. I do have a cat, though. That's true. Oh, hello. Yes. Three other sad women. I love that. Fuck yeah, dude. How many cats you got? Just one? That's the way to do it. I have one cat, too. Yeah, she your best friend? Yeah. Yeah, that's sad. Um, <laughs> I love my cat, dude, but she don't give a shit about me. She could care less. And everyone's like, oh, why don't you have kids? I'm like, because I am terrified of really fucking up a kid, like, to the point where they'll be in therapy for the rest of their life. You can't do that with a cat. You know why? Because cats don't love you to begin with, so... <laughs> You're never going to do anything that hurts their feelings. <laughs> I have found out, and I'm sure that you feel this too, I have found out that the fastest way to piss off your friends with kids is to compare the accomplishments of their kids to the accomplishments of your cat. It's one of my favorite things to do. Because my friend will call me and be like, oh my God, Mary, Aiden, 12 months old, just rolled over. And I'm like, babe, I know the feeling. Duchess came out from under the couch without a treat. <laughs> oh. Big day for us, you know? <laughs> I've been an aunt since I was 11 years old, okay? I have 12 nieces and nephews. I'm not afraid of being around children. I'm very good with kids. Um, but it's funny because I realized that up until this point in my life, I have largely used my nieces and nephews as pawns just to get back at my siblings, you know? <laughs> Because, like, their kids would come stay at my house or, like, spend the night or whatever, and they'd be like, oh, Aunt May, can we have candy with dinner? And I'd be like, baby, you can have all the candy you want. <laughs> oh, can we have soda? And I was like, I'll do you one better. You ever heard of Red Bull? <laughs> my sister crawls me crying at 2 in the morning. She's like, what the fuck did you do to these kids? <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, that's for calling me fat when I was 13. Take it. Yeah. <laughs> my boyfriend has a six-year-old daughter. Uh, it is weird trying to find my role in her life, you know, like trying to take on a stepmom role. It is, uh, it is very confusing at times because like I want her to associate me with fun I want to have a good time with her I want to be her friend you know but I also understand that I'm an authority figure in this child's life you know like I'm gonna have to punish her at some point you know and what does that look like as a stepmom like can I hit her I don't know you know like <laughs> I know I can't drown her that's a birth mom thing <laughs> I see some sour faces out there. <laughs> and if you're not laughing at that joke because you didn't think it was funny, I want you to know that I truly am okay with that, all right? But I also want you to know that if you did not laugh at that joke, and then in the next breath, you're gonna turn around and be like, I love true crime. Uh, <laughs> you can go fuck yourself. That's what I need you to know. <laughs> oh, being a stepmom is weird, man. It's just so different, you know? Like, I have not gotten stuck in one dryer. <laughs> if you're sitting out there confused, I want you to know that you're a good person. Okay? But what you can do tomorrow, uh, when you go back to work, from your work computer, just... <laughs> Just Google stepmom stuck in dryer, okay? <laughs> and it's gonna be a good day for you, all right? You're gonna get to meet your HR rep. Uh, they might help you clean up your desk a little bit. Uh, oh God, there are so many sweet-faced women looking at their men. 
and their men look exactly like this guy in the front who's just turned to the side. <laughs> Very interested in playing with his ear. He's like, I don't, no, I've never heard of that. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's, a, it's a porn thing. Uh, it's... <laughs> There's an entire genre of porn that is just stepmoms getting stuck in things. <laughs> Dryers, tables, chairs. It's, it's items that you cannot get stuck in. <laughs> Which is why it is so confusing and hilarious at the same time. And if people always ask me like, Mary, well, how do you know about stuck porn? I'm like the same way you did when Pornhub was free over the pandemic, okay? <laughs> You start clicking around, you find what you're into. So, uh, stepmom stuck in dryer is exactly what it sounds like. And uh, so, if this, <laughs> <laughs> my mom's in the audience right now. Uh, <laughs> It's her 65th birthday today, too, so... Yeah. I'm so sweaty. Uh, but I'm just... I have to keep going at this point. <laughs> if this stool is a dryer... <laughs> and I am a stepmom... Imagine me, I'm, I'm only wearing like a, a little nighty, like a little lace nighty with nothing underneath and it ends about here, okay? And I'm doing laundry and my hand, if you can't see it, is just through the stool. You can, I mean, you could easily get out. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the insides of dryers, not that complicated. So the stepmom is doing laundry and then she says something like, Oh no, stepson, I am stuck. <laughs> and then the stepson comes into frame and he has his hard dick already out of the hole of his boxers. He's ready, he's been ready. And, uh, and he sees her and he wants to help, obviously. He's a nice guy, you know. And so he says something like, oh no, how did this happen? <laughs> and then it's like eight minutes of that. <laughs> that's, it. that's the whole thing. And then she, she gets unstuck as soon as the sticky stuff comes out, which makes no sense to me. It's, it's wild. It's just so wild. And I'm very sorry that I did that. <laughs> Mom, did you know about stuck porn? Not until today. Not until today. <laughs> What'd you say? Thank you, honey. Thank you, honey. <laughs> oh my God. The next time you forget your mom's birthday, be like, listen, you got it off easy, okay? <laughs> Me not getting you a card is the best thing because I witnessed, uh, okay. <laughs> Oh boy. Are there any questions at this point? <laughs> Does anybody have anything they want to share? We'll turn it into a town hall meeting if you want. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> Did you just say what kind of dryer? <laughs> Honestly, it probably depends on the move that he's doing. You know, like if he's giving her one of these, it's a whirlpool, would be my guess. <laughs> Slap on the ass is probably Maytag. That would be my... <laughs> if they use toys, General Electric. Um... <laughs> mm, that's a good one, yeah. He said if, if she's Barbie, it could be Kenmore, yeah. <laughs> many dryer brands. Did I miss any? What'd you say? Is there an oven episode? 
Is there an oven episode? I'm sure that there is, but you might get into some weird suicide shit if you start looking up stepmom stuck in oven. You might not get... You might not get exactly what you're looking for, but Godspeed. Text me. Let me know. <laughs> God damn, where do we go from there? Uh... <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm trying to figure my life out. I know it doesn't seem like it. <laughs> What'd you say? Next stop, OnlyFans? I'm not doing OnlyFans. <laughs> There's nothing against that. If you want to do OnlyFans, by all means, that's on you. I mean, here's the thing. I think sex work has become obviously much more apparent. A lot of people do it. A lot of people have talked about it over the course of the pandemic. And amen, good for you. Uh, it is one of those things, though, that has made me had it's kind of awkward because I've had to recently call into question some of my strongest beliefs, you know, like uh, specifically ones about gender equality. Uh, because, like, I'm a female comic, right? You know, so uh, as soon as I walk on stage, half the audience is going to be like, well, this fucking sucks. And I understand that. <laughs> For whatever reason, there's this huge stigma that women aren't funny. So I have to be twice as funny to be seen as half as good as my male counterparts. And it's bullshit. And guess what? We actually do make less money. So my entire life, I've been like, rah, rah, feminism. Everything's amazing. Women, no glass ceilings. I've been trying to do that forever. And... Honestly, that all did come into question when I started selling pictures of my feet. <laughs> because, like, listen, my boyfriend's a garbage man, okay? He has very long days, 14 hours. It's hot as shit in the summer. It's cold in the winter. It is a physical job that takes a toll on his body, all right? And last week, he and I made the same amount of money, and all I had to do was put my feet in a bowl of milk for a man on the internet. <laughs> and listen, I'm not saying there's not fucked up shit going on in America with women's rights right now. Like, it's insane out there. But what I am saying is maybe get a pedicure and... <laughs> take some of that power back because it feels incredible. I will tell you that. It's, uh, it's santoratoes at gmail.com. That's a very real email. If you are into feet, please email me um, and I'll send you pictures of my feet. I'll do that. I'll do that for you. I'll sell you my shoes. I don't give a fuck. No, life's been crazy, man. I'm trying to figure my shit out. It's wild because, like, uh, <laughs> I have um, a lot of different mental illnesses. I have ADHD, anxiety, and depression. Oh, you know what I love is that the person who also has ADHD interrupted. I love that so much. <laughs> I love that so much because that's like textbook ADHD. Is there like like one of the questions on the checklist is like, do you always interrupt others and try to relate by making it about yourself? And I'm like, fuck yeah, he does. I love that. <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> it can be difficult to explain anxiety to people to, who's like never felt it before. You know, like I was on a flight not too long ago and I had a book in my lap and the woman sitting next to me looked at the book and she goes, oh, what are you reading? And now listen, I am not one of those people who hates conversation. I love talking to strangers. It's like one of my favorite things. Like, I'm the asshole stopping old men in the grocery store. You know, I'm like dancing up and down the frozen food section. I'm like, hey, dude, come here. Check this out. Look at this. Look at this. Fucking corn. Have you seen this? <laughs> dude, you see that they got sweet, semi-sweet, and you mix it with lima beans? Yes, yeah, succotash. You've heard of it. Yeah. How many kids do you have? Who's your wife? You know? <laughs> Like, I'm always ready to make a new friend, you know? So when this lady asked about my book, I was, like, stoked to tell her about it, you know? I was like, oh, this book, it's actually about a female writer who lives alone, she travels for work, and she has anxiety. And I'm a female writer. I live alone, I travel for work, and I have anxiety. And she just goes, oh. <laughs> anxiety. You know... My daughter says that she has anxiety, but I don't believe in it. And I was like, oh, do you think that maybe that's the reason that your daughter has anxiety? 
yikes, <laughs> you know? And listen, I'm not trying to single entire groups of people out, but baby boomers, you fucked us up, okay? You did, you did. Baby boomers did a number on Gen X and millennials. Like, and here's the thing, they're just such a, like, a hard-ass fuck your feelings, get back to work generation. They're so mean. <laughs> It's not your fault, you're just dehydrated. I know that. I know that. Think about it, when's the last time you saw your parents have a glass of water? Never, it's never happened. Ask them. Be like, hey dad, when's the last time you had water? And he'll be like, I drank from a hose in 84 and that was enough. When's the last time I had water and had lead in it? <laughs> it's wild, dude. I think that's what happens. I think boomers are just so dehydrated, their muscles start cramping up, their brain goes into a fog, they start spouting off shit that doesn't make any sense, you know? Like, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, there's no handouts in life, you know? I'm just like, well, I'm wearing Vans and you're holding a lottery ticket, so. <laughs> you know? But I don't, I don't wanna get too hard on boomers because you guys were raised by World War II veterans. Like, I can't even imagine what that was like. Are you clapping because you're a World War II veteran? Because that would be impressive. This person is like 120 years old. What'd you say? Jesus Christ, did you hear that? Do you see what I mean? Thank you for proving my point, sir. God damn. I asked a simple question. Are you a World War II veteran? No, I was raised by one. Fuck, listen. I'm not the one who put the oranges in your stocking, sir. You don't have to get mad at me. <laughs> Holy shit. Why are you so mad? <laughs> so mad. How old are you? 65? So is my mom. She's not mad. I told her about porn tonight. She's totally fine. What the fuck happened to you? It's <laughs> exactly what it's like, man. I feel like half this room just had a flashback to childhood. Everyone sat up straighter. They listen like, just shut up. Just shut the fuck up. way, I just want you to know that you guys were so hard on us that we overcorrected and made Gen Z. This is your fault. <laughs> I never meant for that to happen. You know, all I ever wanted was for my feelings to be validated. Did you hear that voice? He's never given a hug. <laughs> That's it. That's all we wanted. Just a hug and then it's going to be okay. You know what we got? A work permit. <laughs> so now I'm looking at younger generations and I'm just like, I don't know, dude, do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> not money's not real, gender's fluid, I don't give a shit. No, no, you know what? I actually don't care what your pronouns are because I'm never gonna own a house. So <laughs> Oh, my parents were hard like that. My parents were, you didn't talk about mental illness. You didn't talk about it. It didn't come up. We didn't talk about your feelings. That was not, you gave it to Jesus and then that's it. That's between you and God. Don't bring it here, you know? <laughs> like when my parents were going to, through a divorce, I remember I wanted to go to therapy. Like my school counselor told me about therapy and I told my mom that I wanted to go to therapy and she told me that I was not allowed to go to therapy because if anyone we knew found out about it, it would ruin our family name. I was like, Mom, we were on the news last week because the Animal Protective League took 37 cats from our house. <laughs> what family name are you worried about, bitch? <laughs> like, excuse me? It's gone. Uh, <laughs> I know she's in the room, so please don't get weird about this. Um, <laughs> No, I did not get to go to therapy in the 90s. You know what my therapy was in the 90s? A mood ring. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> my parents bought me a mood ring, and when I was having one of my little fits, they would make me put the mood ring on, 
tell them what color it was, and then that's how we would proceed with the day. So I'd be freaking out having what I now understand is a panic attack. And my dad would be annoyed with me. He'd be like, oh God, Mayor, what color's the ring? <laughs> it's blue. He'd pull out like a crumpled piece of paper from Claire's. He's like, oh, blue? Well, uh, blue means calm, so get in the van, we're late. <laughs> I don't feel calm. I think that was my first lesson in shoving your feelings down. You know what I mean? Oh, you've got problems. We've all got problems. Why don't you drink them away like the rest of us? <laughs> all right, but I'm 12. So. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. One other person who was hammered at the winter formal. I love that. Listen, if you guys like me, you can do me a favor. You can follow me on social media. It's just at Mary Santora Comedy on TikTok or Instagram. Um, if that boomer shit made you mad, you can follow me on Facebook. I am, uh, I am going to therapy now. It's cool. I was in Zoom therapy for a while over the pandemic, and that was, uh, it was fine, you know? And here's the thing. I'm not going to knock therapy of any kind. I think everybody should go. Um, but Zoom therapy was weird because, like, I'm not sure that that woman's a doctor. <laughs> I Googled therapist near me, no insurance, and her page popped up. Like, that's... <laughs> That's how we got here. Like, for all I know, her sexual kink could be watching people cry. I have no idea. <laughs> like, up until Zoom therapy, she was just, like, creeping around at funerals and, like, rubbing one out to Pixar movies. I don't know. <laughs> you kidding me, man? If you like watching people cry, a Pixar movie is a great place to be. So you just sit in the back like, yeah, we don't talk about Bruno, do we? Yeah. <laughs> On one of our first sessions, she actually asked me, what are some of your goals in therapy? Like, what are some things you want to get out of our time together? And I hadn't really thought about that. I was like, damn, dude, I don't know. Like, this is more preventative for me. You know, like, I just don't want to end up like one of those dudes who goes live on Facebook while three people watch. <laughs> you know those guys? Yeah, I can't stand him. My brother's one of these dudes. He's such a conspiracy theorist. And it's always the same thing. He's always adjusting the camera. He's like, all right, I'm going to give everybody a couple minutes to hop on here. It's like, nobody's hopping on. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Because then they get into it, you know? They're always just like, here's what they want you to think. They want you to think that COVID started in China. Mm -mm. COVID didn't start in China. You know where COVID started? Band-Aids. That's right. They've been putting coronavirus into Band-Aids, so we put it directly into our open wounds. And what? Now all of a sudden, Johnson & Johnson has a vaccine? The information's all out there. Do your own research. Wake up, sheeple! <laughs> I hate doing that joke in America. <laughs> you know why? Because of how you guys reacted. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm done. Because I feel like half of you laughs because you're like, oh shit, that's my cousin. <laughs> ah, no, I know him. I know that guy. <laughs> but then I also, every time I do that joke, there's an overwhelming sense of people sitting out there like, I don't know, man, she's making a lot of sense. <laughs> Have we looked into the Band-Aid thing yet? I haven't even heard. That's crazy, you know? <laughs> it's funny because nowadays in comedy, everybody's so terrified of getting canceled. That's like a huge problem in the comedy community. Everybody's like, oh, you can't say anything anymore. I'm going to get canceled. I can't even make a joke anymore. I'm going to get canceled. <laughs> Listen, I play small towns in the middle of the country, all right? The people I perform for are not the people who cancel people, all right? <laughs> I am not worried about getting canceled. I am, however, worried about accidentally becoming the leader of a cult. <laughs> yeah, that terrifies me. 
because I'm going to do that joke in the middle of Nowheresville, Indiana, and then I'm going to wake up to a viral Reddit post two days later that's just like, y'all heard of Mary Santor? She got a lot of good ideas. <laughs> that's it for me, guys. Thank y'all so much. So I got on radio full-time in 2019, and since then, in the last three years, my crowd work time, like reaction time, just the thinking on your feet, because we do, you know, 20 hours of live radio every single week, and you're in the room reacting with people, you know? So in those three years, just having that constantly, like working on that and having to be quick on your feet, it has taken my crowd work, personally, I think, to like a whole nother level, where it's just, just the sheer, speed at which I can respond now to four years ago where it'd be like oh haha I don't know what to say so I'd make fun of their shirt or something where it's like I'm a lot more proud of the things I come up with in the moment now so I've not recorded any like video outside you know from my own phone or camera or anything like that so up until this point everything I've recorded has either been used for like submissions or for social media clips or for me to rewatch and vomit uh, trying to look at myself do stand up <laughs> so um, so my first album came out two years ago, and so I ditched all that and then have been doing a lot of soul searching, you know, mostly just trying to really find myself and my voice and just figure out where I am as a human, um, except none of that. I'm coming up on four years of sobriety, so with, by the time this comes out, I'll have four years. So these jokes have been uh, a few more years in the making than the last two, and the experiences behind them and things like that. So I'm uh, very emotionally connected to them. It's like sending your kid to school. You know, I've been working on it, and I want everyone else to like it, and I hope that they do, <laughs> and so we'll see how it goes. So I was here featuring the rest of the weekend, just kind of polishing up, and it's been incredible crowds all weekend. I mean, people from Philly have a great sense of humor, and being from Cleveland, I know what that's like, so. I think it'll be great. And your mom's here. My mom's here, it's my mom's birthday. It's been a little bit of a nightmare getting her here, but uh, I'm very glad that she's here and that I actually get to spend her birthday together and also make it about me, so.